What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Network Plus N10 007 certification. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about network services such as DNS services, DHCP services, NTP, and IPAM, also known as IP address management. Let's talk about the DNS. That stands for Domain Name System. So the DNS, this is a hierarchical and decentralized naming system for computers, services, or other resources connected to the internet or a private network. It associates various information with domain names assigned to each of the participating entities. Most prominently, it translates more readily memorized domain names to the numerical IP addresses needed for locating and identifying computer services and devices with the underlying network protocols. So in layman's terms, the DNS is essentially the phone book of the internet. Instead of memorizing a bunch of IP addresses to get to a certain website, DNS associates names to those IP addresses. And an example of this would be the IP address of 172.67.147.245. That is the IP address associated with my website, technologyg.com. If you type the IP address into the URL or the Uniform Resource Locator, it will take you straight to Technology G. And as a word of caution, my website is behind what is called a content delivery network or a CDN. So if you try to access my website directly by the IP address, it is going to present you an error stating direct IP access is not allowed. So you can only access my website by typing in the name technologyg.com. Let's talk about DNS records. So DNS records, also known as zone files, these are instructions that live in authoritative DNS servers and provide information about a domain, including what IP address is associated with that domain and how to handle requests for that domain. These records consist of a series of text files written in what is known as DNS syntax. And DNS syntax is essentially a string of characters used as commands that tell the DNS server over what to do. You can think of a set of DNS records like a business listing on Yelp. The listing will give information about the business, such as the business's location, hours, services offered, etc. All domains are required to have at least a few essential DNS records for users to be able to access their website using a domain name. There are several optional records that serve additional purposes. Let's talk about some of the most common DNS records. So the first one we have is the A record and the A stands for address. And this record holds the IP address of a domain name. So an example would be the A record for the IP address of technologyg.com is 172.67.147.245. Then we have the AAAA record. So just a single A records, they only hold IP version four addresses, but IP version six addresses, they store the AA AA records. Next, we have the TXT record or the text record, and this lets a domain administrator store text notes in the record in the DNS. The TXT record was originally intended for human readable notes. However, it is possible to put machine readable data into a TXT record. And then you have the SPF or the sender policy framework. This is a type of TXT record in a DNS zone file. SPF records identify which mail servers are permitted to to send email on behalf of your domain and SPF records can help detect and prevent spammers from sending email messages with forged from addresses on your domain. And then the next type of TXT record is the DKIM or the domain keys identified mail record. And this is an authentication standard used to prevent email spoofing. The DKIM or the DKIM record attempts to prevent the spoofing of a domain that's used to deliver email. Then we have the serve or the SRV or the service record. This specifies a host and port for specific services such as voice over IP, instant messaging, etc. Most other DNS records only specify a server or an IP address, but the service records include a port at the IP address as well. And some internet protocols require the use of the SRV records in order to properly function. And then we have the MX or the mail exchange record. And this direct 
Rex email to a mail server and the MX record indicates how email messages should be routed in accordance with SMTP or simple mail transfer protocol, which is the standard for all email. Then we have the C name record or the canonical name, and this is used in lieu of an A record when a domain or subdomain is an alias for another domain. And all C name records must point to a domain and they can never point to an IP address. So an example of this would be, suppose you have the site blog.website.com and that has a C name record with the value of website.com. This means when a DNS server hits the DNS records for blog.website.com, it actually triggers another DNS lookup to uh, go find website.com, returning website.com's IP address via its A record. And then in this case, blog.website.com, that will be the C name or the true name of blog website. Dot com. And then we have an NS record or a name server record. This indicates which DNS server is authoritative for that domain or essentially which server contains the actual DNS records. NS records tell the internet where to go to find out a domain's IP address. A domain often has multiple NS records, which can indicate primary and backup name servers for that domain. Without properly configured NS records, users will be unable to load a website or application. And as a side note, NS records, they can never point to a C name record. Then we have the pointer record or the PTR, and this provides the domain names associated with an IP address. A pointer record is exactly the opposite of the A record, which provides the IP address associated with the domain name. Pointer records are used in reverse DNS lookups. So when a user attempts to reach a domain name in the browser, a DNS lookup occurs, matching the domain name to the IP address. A reverse DNS lookup is the opposite of this process. It is a query that starts with the IP address and then looks up the domain name. Let's talk about cloud hosted DNS. So cloud hosted DNS is a high performance, resilient global DNS service that publishes your domain names to the global DNS in a cost effective way. Cloud hosted DNS lets you publish DNS zones and records without the burden of managing your own DNS servers and software. Then we have a DNS hierarchy or the DNS root domain. So DNS, it uses a hierarchy to manage its distributed database system. The DNS hierarchy or the domain namespace is an inverted tree structure. The DNS tree has a single domain at the top of the structure called the root domain. A period or a dot is the designation for the root domain. Below the root domain are the top level domains that divide the DNS hierarchy into segments. Then we have domains and subdomains. So a domain is a label of the DNS tree. Each node of the DNS tree represents a domain. Domains under the top level domains represent individual organizations or entities. These domains can be further divided into subdomains to ease administration of an organization's host computers. And then a domain in a subtree, this is considered part of all domains above it. So for example, in this picture below, you have chicago.companya.com. This is a part of the company.com domain and both are part of the .com domain. Next we have is DNS zones. So the DNS is broken up into many different zones. These zones differentiate between distinctly managed areas in the DNS namespace. A DNS zone is a portion of the DNS namespace that is managed by a specific organization or administrator. A DNS zone is an administrative space which allows for more granular control of DNS components such as authoritative name servers. The domain namespace is a hierarchical tree with the DNS root domain at the top. A DNS zone starts at a domain within the tree. It can also extend down into subdomains so that multiple subdomains can be managed by one entity. Next, we have forward versus reverse zones. So DNS zones contain the records for the mapping of domain names to IP addresses or other information. The resolution of a domain name to its assigned information is also referred to as a forward resolution. And the DNS zones associated with such processes are often referred to as forward zones. Reverse zones, which are used for the reverse process, they find the DNS name that is associated with an IP address address. 
Let's talk about the DHCP or the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So the DHCP, this is a network management protocol used on IP networks, whereby a DHCP server dynamically assigns an IP address and other network configuration parameters to each device, such as PCs, printers, servers, routers, etc., on a network so they can communicate with other IP networks. A DHCP server enables computers to request IP addresses and networking parameters automatically from the ISP, reducing the need for a network administrator or a user to manually assign IP addresses to all network devices. In the absence of a DHCP server, a computer or other device on the network needs to be manually assigned an IP address or to assign itself what is called an APIPA address, the latter of which will not enable it to communicate outside of its local network. If you get your address from a DHCP server, you are getting your address assigned dynamically and it could change periodically. So let's talk about some DHCP services. And the first one we're going to talk about is Mac reservation. So some devices on the network require static addresses that do not change, such as printers, servers, which have to be assigned manually by a network administrator. This enables these devices to be more reliable and easily accessible over time. A Mac reservation or a media access control reservation is when a DHCP server maps a specific Mac address to a specific IP address that will not be assigned to any other device within a network. This static addressing approach is referred to as a DHCP reservation. Next, let's talk about pools. So a DHCP pool is when a DHCP server maintains a pool of IP addresses and leases an address to any DHCP enabled client when it starts up on the network. Because the IP addresses are dynamic or leased rather than static, meaning they're permanently assigned, addresses no longer in use are automatically returned to the pool for reallocation. Next, we have IP exclusion. So a DHCP IP exclusion, this is a specified range of IP addresses residing within a DHCP range. IP addresses residing within the exclusion range are excluded from the pool of available IP addresses and are unleasable. The DHCP server is prevented from assigning IP addresses within the exclusion range to network devices. Next we have is lease time. So a DHCP assigned IP address is not permanent and they typically expire in about 24 hours. This is what's referred to as a DHCP lease time. Unless modified from default settings, DHCP servers assume that your IP address is temporary and expires after a set amount of time. This practice can be extremely beneficial as IP addresses become available for other devices to use when needed. And this creates a more streamlined system it makes staying organized a lot easier. Next, we have DHCP Relay. So the DHCP Relay agent operates as the interface between DHCP clients and the server. The DHCP Relay agent relays DHCP messages between DHCP clients and DHCP servers on different IP networks. Let's talk about NTP or network time protocol. So the network time protocol, this is a networking protocol for clock synchronization between computer systems over packet switch, variable latency data networks. NTP is intended to synchronize all participating computers to within a few milliseconds of coordinated universal time. It uses the intersection algorithm to select accurate time servers and is designed to mitigate the effects of variable network latency NTP can usually maintain a time to within tens of milliseconds over the public internet and can achieve better than one millisecond accuracy in local area networks under ideal conditions. Asymmetric routes and network congestion can cause errors of 100 milliseconds or more. The protocol is usually described in terms of a client server model, but can as easily be used in peer to peer relationships where both peers consider the other to be a potential time source. NTP supplies a warning of any impact heating leap second adjustment, but no information about local time zones or daylight savings time is transmitted. And then we have IPAM or IP address management. So IPAM, this is a methodology implemented in computer software for planning and managing the assignment and use of IP addresses and closely related resources of a computer network. It does not typically provide DNS and DHCP services, but manages information for these components. Additional functionalities such as 
as controlling reservations in DHCP and other data aggregation and reporting capabilities is also common. Data tracked by the IPAM system may include information such as IP addresses in use and the associated devices and their users. IPAM tools are increasingly important as new IP version 6 networks are deployed with large address pools of 128-bit hexadecimal numbers and new subnetting techniques are implemented. All right, so that was my class. Now let's do some of this outstanding check on learning. So which DNS record is used in lieu of an A record when a domain or subdomain is an alias for another domain? Is it the MX record, the AAA record, the DKIM record, or the C name record? And the correct answer is... This would be the C name record or the canonical name record. Next question. What is a hierarchy used to manage a distributed database system? Is it a cloud hosted DNS, a DNS root domain, DNS zone, or a subdomain? So what is a hierarchy used to manage a distributed database system? The correct answer is this will be a DNS root domain. Next question. Which DHCP service allows for an IP address to be assigned to a certain network device? Is this pools, IP exclusions, MAC reservations, or NTP? So which one of these will allow for an IP address to be assigned to a specific network device? And the correct answer is, this will be a MAC reservation or a media access control reservation. All right, so in summary, we have talked about network services such as DNS services, DHCP services, NTP, and IPAM or IP address management. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Network Plus N10-007 certification. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.